Hello, I'm Gavin Clark, and I'm here with the National Museum of Computing, which is, has, holds the largest collection of working historical computers. Um, we've been taking your questions over Twitter about the collection and other historical systems, and we had an interesting one come in from Tom Burns. He asked us, what relics of computing history still live with us today? Obviously, that's a huge, huge subject. Uh, relics are historically interesting objects, but we thought we'd take an angle on some relics that aren't just with us today, but are still widely used. Um, and I have with me uh, one of our volunteers, Roger Johnson. Roger, we had a, uh, two, two suggestions uh, came to mind, didn't they? Maybe you could take us through them. Uh, what, what was the first one you, you wanted to highlight? Well, I, I wanted to talk briefly about multipliers and multiplier circuits. Um, if you think about relics um it we are in i i computing is a, is is fundamentally a branch of engineering and so it evolves we're we're all dwarves standing on giants shoulders and uh, one example that i'm familiar with concerns the problem of building in hardware a multiplier circuit and in the late 1940s uh, this had not been successfully done. And uh, one afternoon, uh, a man called Andrew Booth, um, who was at Birkbeck College in London University, went out to have tea with his wife, who was also in the department. Uh, and they went to a cafe in Southampton Row in Bloomsbury in central London. And while they were having uh, tea, uh, Andrew Booth suddenly realized how uh, you could make a very simple multiplier circuit, uh, which apparently was written down on a paper napkin, uh, which is sadly not preserved. Uh, but uh, it was written down and he went back to the laboratory and he managed to build this circuit. Now, this circuit he put into one of his very early computers and uh, published the algorithm and it was originally implemented using uh, a, a computer uh, logic and, and, and valves. And uh, over the years, that algorithm, that way of doing, building a multiplier, making a multiplier work, has been used over and over again. And if you've got a mobile phone or a laptop or any other uh, modern electronic device, uh, it's stuffed full of multiplication circuits. and uh, all or most of those multiplication circuits are uh, what are called modified Booth multipliers. It's what Andrew Booth wrote on that napkin uh, in 1950. Just quickly, what for those who aren't so up to speed on tenuring, what what does a, a Booth multiplier do? Why do we need them? Why do you need them then? Why do you need them now in a mobile phone? Be well, it, almost every computer program uh, that we write includes multiplication. And uh, if you want to do almost any activity, uh, you, it's important to have uh, fast multipliers. And that was the problem that Booth uh, successfully solved. Um, I can't, uh, it's relatively easy to describe um, a Booth multiplier because if you're familiar with long multiplication as it's usually taught uh, in schools, basically, Booth implemented that in hardware um, mm. and uh, are, are using binary numbers. And uh, th that uh, technology uh, ha has been reused. It, when, when you see it, you think, well, that's the obvious way to do it. But it wasn't obvious until somebody realized that was the best way. OK. And there was a second one which we were discussing, uh, relics that are still with us today. I believe it was binary, wasn't it? The, the early computers were built using um, uh, binary uh, logic because uh, binary is very well suited to uh, electronic circuits. Uh, it, basically, it's, it's on or it's off. Uh, in, in simple language. Uh, but earlier machines, earlier calculating machines back to Babbage and even before Babbage were built on decimal uh, calculating devices, mm. the which 
uh, in which it actually is a, the earliest working machine and which is at uh, the National Museum of Computing, the which is uh, in many respects uh, a, a decimal machine. It works using base 10 uh, numbering. Mm -hmm. um, but experience taught the engineers that um, decimal, uh, sorry, binary, noughts and ones, was a much easier way to work. It produced much faster machines. Mm -hmm. And this is always true in engineering, that people invent things, they're used, uh, and then somebody does it better. And so some things, possibly you could argue, the valves from the early computers, um, mm -hmm. these uh, were superseded by better technologies better materials come along mm -hmm. and so it's possible to retain the same algorithms underneath the same ways of doing things but mm -hmm. to use different engineering technologies to actually achieve them indeed something some technologies uh, are dead ends and others get overtaken but some things are with us with us forever but that's great and um, that's really good and i hope tom that answers your question <laughs>